Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineeringtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss compound interest and the use of uniform series payment formulas. In this video, we will define the topic of compound interest and the use of uniform series payment formulas, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of compound interest and uniform series payment formulas falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook 8th edition, 2nd revision. As explained in a previous video, money today does not have the same value as money at some point in the future. For this reason, we need tools, tables, formulas, and various economic factors to reference when it is necessary to compare two complex alternatives. A series of these formulas are known as the Uniform Series Payment Formulas. These formulas take a uniform series of transactions continuing over a specified period of time and converts it into a single equivalent value at some other point in time. A uniform series of transactions are often referred to as an annuity and denoted with an A. Recall that we are concerned with the interest when using these formulas, and more specifically the compound interest. The compound interest is the interest for a period calculated off the principal and interest from a previous period. All engineering economic analysis is based off compound interest, and for that reason, as we will see, Special tables with various pre-calculated conversion factors have been de developed for our use. So let's run through a general workflow. The goal of any uniform series payment problem is to determine what single monetary value would be equivalent at some other point in time based off specific economic factors. The first step to solving a uniform series payment problem is to determine the various factors of importance. These factors include, number one, the magnitude of the series to be analyzed, number two, the equivalent value to be determined, a future or present value, the interest rate, and number four, the number of periods. Once these variables are defined, we can solve these problems in one of two ways, either by using the uniform series compound amount formula found in the table on page 114 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision, or by using the functional notation version of the equation and referencing the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. So let's run through an example. A local community college invests $100,000 of their yearly revenues into a money market account at the end of each year. If the account has an 8% annual yield, how much money will be in the savings after eight years? So here's the solution. The goal is to determine what payment would be equivalent eight years down the road had the college invested uniformly a series of $100,000 annually at an 8% annual yield. Like we established earlier, this can be determined in one of two ways, either by using the uniform series compound amount formulas or using the functional notation version of these formulas and referencing the compound interest tables. In this video, we will solve using the uniform series compound amount formula written in functional notation and the compound interest tables. In this problem, we are converting the uniform series into a future value. 
which is an important to know and to note when we go to reference the compound interest tables. In this problem, we are converting a present value into a future value. The uniform series compound amount formula in functional notation for future worth is F is equal to A times F over A I N, where the term F over A I N can be defined using the given values of interest and the period and the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the reference handbook. Again, we are given an interest rate of 8% or 0 0.08 and a period of 8 years. Referencing the compound interest table for an interest rate of 8% on page 119 of the NCES Supplied Reference Handbook, we locate the period of 8 on the far left column and work our way horizontally to the factor F over A and find that this, this factor F over A I N is equal to 10.6366. Plugging this value into the equation we get F is equal to $100,000 times 10.6366 which equals $1,000,000 $63,660. So the equivalent at the end of eight years after investing $100,000 annually at an 8% yield will be $1,063,660. So there are a few ways we can mess up on a problem like this. When using the compound interest tables, it is important to make sure that you are referencing the correct term. It is very easy to jump columns and use the value defined in the AF column instead of the FA column. In the same way, it's very easy to reference the wrong row for the number of periods. We may be able to catch this mistake when we see that our answer is significantly off base, but sometimes using the wrong ratio or period isn't always so evident, making it crucial that you are paying attention to all the terms. Well, that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, Type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Boot Camp, 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.